On this episode of UTR, we head to Silver Lake for a dune ride that's so much fun, you won't even notice the sand in your shoes. We'll also do some wild off-roading and have more family fun than a barrel of tourists. We'll even meet the mad scientist of sausage and have a cow at a real dairy farm. Then we're off to Midland for a real Santa school, a home designed like no other, and a restaurant that's so good it's scary. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness for the fight against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. Also in part by the Food Bank Council of Michigan, Michigan's statewide food bank network, committed to the alleviation of hunger in Michigan and in our nation. The Food Bank Council of Michigan gathers food and funds to help stock Michigan's food banks. Support for Under the Radar Michigan comes from Big B Coffee, celebrating 17 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, coffee mugs, and coffee by the pound are available in-store and online. Locations at BIGGBY.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar in Michigan. You know, if you're looking for fine dining and fancy shops, there's plenty of places in Michigan for that. But if you're the kind of family that likes to vacuum sand out of your car for three weeks straight, I got just the place for you. Silver Lake was nominated by Travel and Leisure as one of America's best little beach towns. And when you come here, you'll see why. The town is surrounded by mountains of sand, miles of pristine beaches, and tons of fun stuff to do. If you're looking to manufacture a marvelous family memory, this is a Michigan stop you must make. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I won. The Silver Lake Dunes area is located on the shores of Lake Michigan, halfway between Muskegon and Ludington. I was so overwhelmed with the funness of this place that I had to hook up with Andrea Heckema for a quick town fun down. I've decided to totally rename your town to Extreme Family Funville, USA. Awesome. You should. You like it? I, I love it. Because this place has everything for families and for fun. It does. You can drive on the sand dunes. You can take a zip line adventure. You can boat. You can jet ski. You can go kart. You can mini golf. Yeah. You can do everything here. I've never seen so many families where the kids are all happy. Nobody's crying. Everybody looks happy. And the little town here is so cute. What's it like living around here? Do you like smile all the time or? Of course. We always smile here. You have to smile here. It's beautiful. It's sunny. It's sandy. The only thing we're missing is like camel rides. Right. That's next. Absolutely. Seriously? Maybe. I'm coming back. OK, so true. There is a ton of cool, fun stuff to do here. But if you haven't gathered by now, the biggest attraction is, well, the sand. Miles and miles of it. It's like the world's coolest sandbox surrounded by water. And it's all here for you to play in. Now, in order to get a lay of the sand, as it were, we headed over to the Mac Woods Dune Rides. It's the best way to see some of the coolest dunes this side of the moon. The Woods family have been doing these rides for four generations now, and there's no other experience in the sand quite like it. <laughs> and our guide, Linda Fordich, was more fun than, well, a truckload of tourists. You came highly recommended. Well, they were desperate. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> have you ever been on a dune ride? Never been on a dune ride. Been on dunes. But never, not a dune ride. I never been on a dune ride either. What? I never been on a dune ride either. This is not good. <laughs> I didn't know there were so many trees in the dune. There aren't. This is just the road to get you there. Oh gosh. How long have you been doing this? Eight years. Eight years. You love it? I do love it. I can tell you're awesome at it. I and mean, we haven't even been on the dune yet. <laughs> well, before long, we were out on the dunes and ready for a wild ride. If all of a sudden I disappear, that means Eric, who's got the camera, fell out of the truck. So when we're done laughing, we'll go back and get him. I got to tell you, the Mac Woods adventure was like a roller coaster ride combined with some of the best views in Michigan. And add in Linda's sense of humor and local knowledge, and you've got the makings for a pretty awesome Michigan adventure. Heck, there's only one thing I can think of that's missing. Is there a meal served? 
on this? There is not. Oh, Unless you want a sandwich. I can <laughs> make you a couple I get of those. A sandwich. <laughs> So not only did we have a great time out on the dunes, I got two shoes full of souvenir sand and a reminder that good old fashioned family fun is what makes the best memories, sandwiches or not. Okay, we didn't get any sandwiches at Macwoods, so we went to Hanson's grocery store in the town of Hart and met up with a sausage making madman. If you like brats, and I know you do, Dave Hanson's the guy to know in these parts. How come my apron's different than yours? Is this the apprentice apron? That's the uh, pre-apprentice apron. Okay, oh, yeah, which I deserve. Yeah. You know, I'm not here today because you've got a really cool specialty grocery store. I'm here because you're supposed to be the homemade sausage dude. I'm the king. I'm the oh. king of sausage. That's a step above dude. That's yeah, way above yeah, dude. Yeah, so you guys, you make some pretty incredible sausage. Oh, my gosh. We make over 30 different uh, kinds of sausage here. Well, show me how you make it. Show me what you're doing. Okay, right now, I just did some of the asparagus brats back here. And I've mixed it all up. Now yeah. I'm going to put it in the stuffer. Stuffer. And we're going to stuff them. And when I say we, I mean you. All right, far be it for me to back down from a sausage stuffing challenge. So here goes nothing. Do I need to sterilize myself? Yeah, we, yeah. here's some uh, special uh, gloves for you. They're orthopedic gloves. So oh, great. You'll, Thanks. You'll love them. Orthopedic gloves. Check. Do Get I catch it as it comes out? What do I do? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it, okay. and then you're going to do it. OK. And uh, the only thing that you can do wrong is not have enough in there or have too much. So not enough or not too much. So I have just, just the right amount. Okay. Here. It's making some funny noises, Dave. I don't know. <laughs> this is turning okay, to work. Okay, here it comes. And, oh my god! That's How big it. of a sausage are you going to make? Well, I'm, we're trying for the Guinness World Record today. Okay. And now I'm going to step out of your way. Okay, what do I step on this foot pedal? Oh no, there's a little leg yeah, thing. Yeah, you just lean into it and hold on to it so it's not too tight. Okay. It's got to be a... Kind of just hold on to it from the bottom almost like that. I like this. Very okay. lightly. You let it kind of let it do its own thing. It's not doing anything, Dave. Oh my God. Well, look, I'm making sausage. This is awesome. How's this going to fit into a frying pan? <laughs> you have to curl it up like a cobra. So, Dave, I see your mom standing over there. Does she always come in to check on you when you're at the store? I hate that. <laughs> you're doing it so much faster than I am. Well, uh, yeah, I know you, uh, you've got right, yeah. right, right, right. So how long have you guys been in business? Well, uh, the store's been in business since 1966. My mother and father actually uh, came here from Gaylord. From Gaylord. Thanks, Gaylord. Mom. Yeah. And I was born here. They were all born here. And they just came home and started a store. This is actually our third store in Hart. Tell me what you love about Hart. What oh keeps you here? Hart, the people are so nice. Uh, the food here is fantastic. And I'm, by food, I mean that this is probably one of the top agricultural uh, places. The, the ground is so sweet, and uh, all of the stuff is, yeah. is, is great. We grow more cherries here than we do anywhere else. We grow more asparagus than anybody, anyone else. Can we get a carry-out lane two? Carry-out lane two, please. You do more carry-out than anybody else? <laughs> I said, do I have to go? All right, back to business. Am I going to have to do all this with you? Because this is a lot of sausage to wrap. No, here. actually, you don't have to do it with me, because I'm planning on uh, taking that carry out. Yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, you can get this and get that. And right. I will, uh, I'll, I'll see you when you're done. Right, Dave. Thanks a lot. Thanks, hey, if Dave. anybody comes to the counter, would you please wait on them? Wait on people at the yeah, counter? thank you. <sighs> Darn it. I wonder if there's even anybody left in the store. Dave? Dave? Oh, gosh. Remember when your mom would say to you, don't have a cow? Well, if you get into this line of work, you can have all the cows you want. Country Dairy is a first-class dairy farm just outside Silver Lake, and it's all things cow. They make milk, cheese, ice cream, and they even give educational and fun family tours of the entire operation. And if that's not enough, they also have a restaurant right on site that serves tasty stuff you can wash down with your milk. Mmm, good. Jeff Swanson gave me my own personal tour because, well, I usually need a bit more attention and supervision than most. You guys produce a lot of milk here. You must drink a lot of milk because you're big and strong. Oh, absolutely. You can see how much taller I am than you. Darn it. No, yeah, this is a really cool operation. How many gallons do you guys go through? We bottle about 75,000 gallons of milk a week through this bottling room. Wow. So, quite a bit. Who gets all this milk? Uh, it goes to 300 stores in Michigan, um, and we also bottle milk for schools during the school year. 
Uh, about 300,000 half pints of milk go to 12 different school districts in Michigan during the school year. Explain what happens to the milk after it leaves the cow. Sure. Well, it leaves the cows down at the end of the bottling plant here. Um, our cows being milk. So the milk comes into the bottling plant, goes through a cream separator, and that's going to take out some of the cream so we can have different kinds of milk, like 2% skim, whole milk. Right. Okay. Then it travels over to this machine that's right behind us, which is a pasteurizer. Right. That heats the milk up to 170 degrees for 15 seconds. Right. And then through a homogenizer, which breaks down the cream so the cream doesn't separate and rise to the top. Right. And then all these tanks behind me are all storing the processed milk right. before it brings comes into the bottling room. What kind of milk did you drink is it, so I can be big and strong like you? Uh, whole milk. Yeah. Vitamin I'm, D. See, don't drink you drink skin. that. Yeah, don't do that. I drink skim yeah. milk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, you can tell. Yeah. One last question. Why is my hairnet pink and yours white? Um, well, to separate you as one of the, a non-employee. Yeah, nothing, nothing no. to embarrass me. No, no. We would never do that. He's lying. <laughs> well, next up, Jeff decided it might be best if I started with the basics. And my uh, crew seemed to think it was a great idea, too. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, I feel kind of weird. I'm going to milk a cow and we haven't even been formally introduced yet. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Oh boy, I don't know how I get talked into this stuff. Okay, I think she's good. All right. So that's, that's all milk? That, that's milk in that udder, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay. Then, you, then you gotta take it and you gotta squeeze a little milk out. Oh. Just like that. You've never done this before, obviously. Well, no, I've never done this before. What? Like, you from the city or something? Oh. Or? <laughs> yeah, I'm from the city. <laughs> Alchemy doesn't mind, doesn't work. All right, so you squeeze off the top right. and then you kind of work it way down. Oh. Hey, hey, there we go. Awesome. All right, as much fun as that was, I think I'll stick to my current profession where I get to visit great places like this. You know, I don't know why they call them heads of cattle. Those don't look like heads to me. Those are definitely not heads. <laughs> so next time you're in Silver Lake and you want to have a cow, stop by Country Dairy. They have them all the time here. Now, we couldn't leave Silver Lake without one last trip to the dunes. So Jimmy Anderson from Parrot's Landing took us out for a wild ride and we had the time of our lives. If you're into off-roading in the sand, this is totally the place to do it. And sure, you might get more sand in your shoes, but believe me, it's totally worth it. Hey Jim, can you get my shoes when you're done? Yeah, Tom, no problem. Hey, I got half the dune in here. It's everywhere. Hi there, I'm in Midland, Michigan. It's kind of like Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings, only no Frodo. You're stuck with me. Now, I might not be as famous or furry as Frodo, but when it comes to the middle of Michigan's Mitten, I'm the man to show you why Midland is a marvelous place to be. Midland is located in the eastern middle of Michigan's Mighty Mitten. People told me I'd like Midland, and I really do. It's a sophisticated small city with everything you need for a first-class quality of life. And when you've got neighborhoods like this right downtown, I can't think of a more perfect place to park yourself. Midland's got everything a great Michigan town could offer, and then some. You know, I'd like to take you to the North Pole to meet Santa, but sorry, this show's about Michigan. But I hear tell he's got an office right here in Midland. Say hello to the Charles W. Howard Santa Claus School. It's the world's oldest institution completely dedicated to the art of being Santa. Once a year, jolly gents from around the world come here to spend three days learning, well, all things Santa. And as you can imagine, it's the Christmasiest place south of the North Pole. Santa Claus is coming to town. Now, if anyone has the spirit of Santa in him, it's Tom Valent. He runs the school and keeps the big guy's legend alive and well. I don't even know where to start with you. This place is so cool. Even the sidewalks have twinkle lights in them. This is the real deal. <laughs> You can build the Santa spirit real big here. Oh my gosh, and this is the oldest running Santa school in the world? It is. We're just finishing celebrating our 75th anniversary. Well, you didn't start it. You look too young for that. Charlie Howard started it. He was original Macy's Day Parade Santa. He was a farmer in New York, and he saw a great need for better Santas. Well, how did you get interested in the Santa school? We just had our first child. We are getting ready to have our first child. And for some reason, I had a calling. I wanted to be Santa. Not so much for my children, but I, it just changed my life a little bit. Holly wondered why I took off from work, because I never take vacations, but I'd go take off, go to Santa school for three days. Well, like you said, uh, being Santa's not a job, it's a calling, because Santa, it's a spirit. Being Santa's a privilege, yes. What's the most as funnest part about teaching all these guys the spirit of Santa Claus? It's like the easiest job in the world. 
It's not a job. They come with the spirit in them, and it grows amongst all of us. There's a lot of friendships gained here. People love to come back here. We have 110 students this year, and half of them are veterans, but they keep coming back anyways. Whether you're a first-timer at the school or a seasoned Santa, getting together like this once a year is a great way to share, grow, and be the best Santa you can be. It's just a pure family. Uh, for the years I've been coming up here, that you know, I get to meet all my old friends, and Tom and Holly is just like the matriarch of the family. My wife thinks I'm a little nuts, but uh, she's my Mrs. Claus, too. Coming back here, it's like, it's like coming home. Holly and them are just so fantastic. The way they put this on, and I'll probably be back next year. And I drive all the way from California out here to, to come to the school. Now, you don't really drive, right? You take the you take the sled, right, with the reindeer? How's the fit and finish so far? The belt's too tight. <laughs> no, so, oh, I wonder what's causing that, Santa. <laughs> I'm sure Santa at the North Pole would be very proud of all these guys and gals. They're helping keep the spirit of Santa alive and bring holiday cheer to kids all around the world. Some small and uh, some not so small. I need a new car, a chicken, uh, I need a sponsor for the show. Let me see, I need a new carpeting for my house, I need a new fishing rod, some fish, because that'll come in handy. And um, uh, did I mention the chicken? Hmm. Oh, okay, and a chicken. And are you getting all this? Uh, I want you to email it to me. Not only do these guys look the part, they're so nice they even let me suit up. And I'll be honest, it took some tugging, shoving, tying, and gluing, but when I was done and everything was in place, you know, I almost felt like Santa. Ho, 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 hello, little Bobby. Ho, 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 ho. Our visit to the Charles W. Howard Santa Claus School left me overwhelmed with kindness and good cheer. And even though the real Santa doesn't live in Midland, it's nice to know his spirit certainly does. And I have to say, the toughest part of our day was trying to pick my favorite Santa. But I think I found him eventually. Santa, you got to know that the guy from Under the Radar is here today, okay? Oh, oh my goodness, yes. Oh, it, I, it, I've seen his show. I love it. Oh, it's a wonderful show, okay? Be sure to fill his stocking nice and full, okay? I'll do my oh, best. Oh, okay. <laughs> you too, Santa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, what's the difference between my house and the place you're about to see? Let me think. Oh, that's right. Everything. It's the Alden B. Dow Home and Studio. And if you're a fan of modern American architecture, this place is a must-see. It's 20,000 square feet of fascinating form and function. Director Craig McDonald gave us some insight into how Alden B. Dow's legacy is being shared with the world. Craig, something tells me that the experience that you have when people come into this house is a lot different than the experience that I have when people come into my house. Um, just walking in the front door, there's got to be a thousand different angles in this front room, and everything still feels right. Yeah, he really put a lot of elements together. He was using nature as his guide. The nature's made up of materials, of repetition of shape, of different colors, changes in elevation, and so he uses that as his guide so it does come off as, as really relaxing. You come into this dynamic space and yet it's dynamic and relaxing all at the same time. And also, when you first approach the house, it doesn't seem as large as it is and it seems to blend in with the surroundings. He was always concerned, especially with a house, if he's designing a structure for human beings to live in. He wants it to be specific to them because he believes we're all creative uh, in different ways and we all live in different ways. And with a house, he doesn't want to really give too much of it away for public just passing by. You share your house with people you invite into your house, so you're not going to learn a lot about his structures by driving by them. So when was this building actually built? Well, the building was built in four different pieces. This particular room is the first room that was built. This is 1934. Right. So this is soon after Mr. Dow gets back from studying with Frank Lloyd Wright. He sits down and really draws the whole complex out. So, so this is where the architects would actually sit and design. Exactly, yeah. These are the drafting tables, uh, the stools that they use. So this is the original space. Very cool space. And talk about a short commute. After a day of designing, Alden would take just a few short steps from his studio to a home the likes of which I've never seen before. And then this transitions into Mr. Dow's office, which is the transition spot between the public areas of the architectural firm and right. the private areas of the house. It's the fourth addition to the building, and it was started in 1939 and finished in the spring of 41. I loved his use of color. Everything seems more whimsical 
and like he had a sense of humor about his design. Yeah, he was very serious about work and very serious about architecture, but he knew that as humans, we can be more productive when we have fun, when we play. And so play was kind of built into the day with him. And you can see all around there are toys, there are puzzles. I mean, truly, the, the trains run throughout four rooms up on top. There's a whole room devoted to trains and toys in the basement of the house. He knew that we get great ideas when we play. Now, Alden B. Dow was also, he was friends with Frank Lloyd Wright, was he not? He was. He, um, he and Mr. Wright connected early on when Mr. Dow was in college at Columbia University. And uh, he had great admiration for Wright's work because Wright was an innovator. The, the thing they have in common, I think, is that they weren't afraid to try new things. I'm pretty sure the last time I said wow this many times in one day, I was at the Grand Canyon. And like the Grand Canyon, cameras don't really do this place justice. If you want to see what I mean, come to the Alden B. Dow home for a tour. Oh, and bring your wow counter. You'll need it. If you like restaurants that are scary good, have I got a place for you. Shari at the Willard Hilton may be a ways out of town, but once you make the drive, believe me, you'll make it again. It's a genuine gourmet restaurant in the middle of nowhere that's full of great food, fun folks, and, uh, well, I guess a few ghosts. Shari Ray Smith is the heart and soul of this eclectic eatery. You've been here 23 years. I have. You've studied the culinary arts in California and New York. What brought you back to Willard, Michigan? I had a love when I was a little kid for the Willard Hilton restaurant. Give me some sense of the history of this building. In it's the 1800s, yeah. it was the Lewis Mason Hotel, and it was probably a, you know, a brothel and bar and general store. And there's a lot of legends and a lot of history that are here. And there's, you know, rumors of that it's haunted. And well, you were telling you, I, I remember I talked to you on the phone. You said there's a ghost that actually dines here or lives here. Well, people see her here, and she lives here, and her name is Sadie. Well, have you ever had an encounter with her? I've had very few encounters, but I see like things go by me, uh -huh. and things move, and a lot of us will see it at the same time. But everyone describes her the same: very petite, strawberry blonde hair, flowing white gown. Now, I love a good ghost story as much as the next guy, but you know the real reason we're here. Tell me a little bit about the food. I like to think of myself as a world chef, not you know so much, I don't really pick a cuisine that I'm favored to because I get mood swings uh, with food. And uh, a lot of those stuff comes locally from farmers that have been dropping in the back door for years. I have a great relationship with Northern Michigan farmers. Uh, over the years, I've done a lot of studying, a lot of research in Michigan and what's available. So I try to do whatever I can to support Michigan. We like to cook with what's in season and what feels good for the season. It took us a while to get here. But I, but I mean, people come from all over to eat here, so you're doing something right. We do things honestly. Yeah. We do them from the heart and soul. We have a great staff that's educated. I love what I do. I think you have to have a huge passion for what you do, and I believe in what we do. Not only does Shari believe in what they do here, she's got throngs of fans that keep coming back for more. The food here is just unbelievable. She dreams food. She's told us she'll wake up in the morning with an idea in her head about foods that you would never imagine going together and then you taste it and they're like, oh, that's perfect. I don't know that I can put, put into words what it really means, but I just know that we can't do without it. You know, five-star dining in the middle of nowhere, that's what it's about. I do it because I love it, it's a passion, it's my life. I've never known anything else since I was probably 10 years old. It's the only thing I've ever done for a living. So you also have internship programs here? I do, I run them from 13 schools across the nation. Uh, Culinary Institute, Johnson & Wales. I have one from Le Cordon Bleu that's now a chef and who graduated to come back and work after he did his internship. And I have an intern who's just getting ready to leave me, who's been with me five years on and off, and he will be going back to Johnson & Wales in Colorado. Do you need a, a permanent um, food taster? We do. You do? We do, and you can have that job. Seriously? Yeah. Well, I decided to pass on the position, but I did get a chance to meet one of Shari's newest and youngest students, Ethan Bruce. So you're part of the job shadowing program here? Yeah. So what is your dream? Do you hope to be one, like one of the great chefs of Europe someday? Uh, great chefs of America would be fine with me. There you go. How about the great chefs of Michigan? Um, that's good too. What words of wisdom would you give some young person, obviously younger than you, if they want to become a chef? Just stick with it and learn from your failures and learn from your successes. That's what I would say. Uh, if you learn from failures, I should be a genius by now. Well, we never did find any ghosts at Shari at the Willard Hilton, but what we did find was some amazing food and an inspired chef who's teaching the next generation what it's all about. And as for Midland, it's another Michigan town with tons of great people and hidden treasures. I mean, heck, Santa set up shop here, and he could go anywhere. Ho, 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 ho.
Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness for the fight against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. Also in part by the Food Bank Council of Michigan, Michigan's statewide food bank network, committed to the alleviation of hunger in Michigan and in our nation. The Food Bank Council of Michigan gathers food and funds to help stock Michigan's food banks. Support for Under the Radar Michigan comes from Big B Coffee, celebrating 17 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, coffee mugs, and coffee by the pound are available in-store and online. Locations at BIGGBY.com. Closed captioning for Under the Radar Michigan is made possible by Shamrock Travel in downtown Rochester. Shamrock Travel, providing complete travel services right here in Michigan for over 20 years. (laughs) 